Hey gorgeous, welcome back to Life in Style. Today's video is going to be my current favorites. Uh, last month I did not do a favorites video just because of some time constraints, so I thought that I would combine what I had pulled for last month and then a couple of things that I've been loving for this month as well. Usually I do adjust makeup, but today I have some skincare, also some lotions and some other things, perfumes as well, that I have just absolutely been loving lately, and then a few um, makeup makeup products. So I'm going to start out with the skincare products and then we'll finish off with the makeup. So the first two things that I have here, um, when the winter months come in, my skin gets very dry, very testy, um, just really sallow and just doesn't have a lot of oomph to it. And I think a lot of people probably go through the same situation. I have an oily T-zone, which gets just a little bit less oily, but then the rest of my face gets very dry and just very icky. So I've got to moisturize and exfoliate more, I feel, in the winter than in the summer. Uh, my skin pretty much can take a lot, so I don't feel like it strips my skin too much. One thing that I love to use is a daily exfoliator. And I don't use it necessarily daily, although you can, it is gentle enough to do so. This is the Micro Delivery Exfoliating Facial Wash from Philosophy. Um, this has been one of my favorite products for many, many years. I love using this year round, but again, especially in the winter, because I feel like it just takes my skin and gets that dead layer off and just brightens it so that it looks better every single day. I don't use it daily. Again, you can use it daily. It is made for daily use. It's basically like a cream cleanser, but has really nice exfoliating. Um, they're not beads because they don't pop or anything, but basically you have a little abrasiveness to it. Again, but it's very gentle and you use it with water so it's not just on your skin. So it's basically like a cream cleanser, but getting all of that dead layer of skin off so that the skin looks brighter. I do notice it really after for you know like the first use you just notice it after every single use it's not something that has to take time for me in my experience to really see or feel um, because your skin does feel very soft and beautiful you do notice it after every single use your skin does look brighter and it's very gentle on the skin so the second skincare product I have I know that skincare can be very, very personal because everyone's skin is different. Of course, you have oily, dry, normal skin type, but people also have very sensitive skin nowadays. I'm noticing that a lot of people more and more are saying that their skin is sensitive. So again, with these types of things, you kind of got to take them with a grain of salt. I could say this micro delivery is absolutely perfect for me. And the person to my left may use it once and say, hell no, I was red in the face. It broke me out. I was burning. You just never know. So these are things that when you want to kind of switch up your skincare, things you do have to try for yourself and not necessarily take my word for it. One of the things that is very personal that I have noticed throughout the years is eye cream. One thing I can tell you though is that I have been using eye cream for many, many years, probably 20 plus years, because my mother always instilled in me that need for good skincare before makeup, before all of that, always take care of your skin. The under eye area and also the, you know, like the lid area, that area on your skin and on your entire body is the thinnest layer of skin that you have. When you see people getting crow's feet and things like that, and you're like, they're really young, that means that that area is very, very dehydrated. So even if an eye cream for me, and I'm not going to spend two, three hundred dollars in an eye cream that says all your lines are going to be gone in a week. I pick eye creams that work for me, that are thick, um, that aren't oily or greasy. I always want to keep that area hydrated. So even if you don't believe that it's going to get rid of dark circles, it's going to get rid of your lines, anything like that, you always want to keep that area hydrated. The, the lotion or moisturizer you use on the rest of your face is not made for under eye area. That's why the under eye area has specific eye creams because they're more gentle on that area. That being said, I started using an eye cream probably about seven months ago that I said, you know, I've heard good things about it. Let me give it a go. Let me see how I like it. It was the only eye cream I was using for those seven months or so until I finished using that specific um, container. I'm on my second container now. Probably about a month and a half to two months ago, as I'm continuously putting on my makeup, concealer, corrector, powder, all that under my eyes, 
I'm noticing something different. I keep looking in the mirror and I'm like, what is it that's going on under there that it just looks different? I'm noticing something different. And what I noticed is that some of the lines that I have under there, whether they've plumped up, whether they've filled in, whether they've actually disappeared, I don't know. They just don't look as prominent and I look like I have less lines under there. And the more I thought about it, the more I said to myself, this is the only eye cream I've been using twice a day, every day for the past, you know, six or seven months or whatever it took me to finish the container. It's the Lancome Jenny Feek, I'm gonna butcher this because I am not French, you activating or youth activating eye cream. So this is what it looks like. Most people I think have seen this container or this, um, you know, this line from them. They also have serums and moisturizers. They are not a cheap brand. Um, this line that they carry is not cheap. This um, container of eye cream I think was like $75. I was <laughs> inspired to speak about it because again, I've noticed a difference and it's continued on underneath my eyes that they just look more supple, healthier, fuller. I don't know how to explain it again, whether the lines disappeared or they're just filled in somehow. I have to believe that it's this eye cream. This has been the biggest difference in my under eye regimen over the past several months. This is the only thing I can attribute it to. Um, again, you have to take this with a grain of salt because not everyone is gonna have the same results. I have just found that I have noticed a huge difference in my under eye area. And again, I was just inspired to speak about it because I just don't know anything else that I've been using constantly like this twice a day, every single day for that you know, amount of time that could have possibly attributed to what I feel is a marked difference in the appearance in my under eye area. So moving on to body stuff. Um, the first thing I have, well, there are two things that I have. Um, if you've never heard of Amazing Grace from Philosophy, I implore you to go to a Sephora, an Ulta, anywhere that sells Amazing Grace and smell it for yourself. I do not buy fragrance just off of uh, descriptions online or descriptions on the TV. But I purchased my first Amazing Grace product probably about two or three years ago from QVC. So I have two products in front of me. I do have the body wash, but it literally, I'm not kidding, is about that big and you probably can't even see or get a sense of it. I'm like looking at this thing and I'm like, how the hell am I gonna fit this in my shower? I fit it in and it's absolutely gorgeous. So the second thing, I always layer the scent as well. So I, I start out by using the um, body wash and then I follow it up with the whipped body creme. This is a huge size. You can't get this in stores. This is, like I said, something that QVC only sells because they do the monster sizes. So you get a lot, a lot of product in this. It smells like clean soap. If you know what a soap smell, you know, is just a good old fashioned type of like ivory scent, but it has a little something there that it's just not like soap scent. Cause I don't think a lot of people necessarily like that soapy scent, but it is soapy, but it has this fragrance that's light and feminine, not too sweet, just perfection. And so when I'm done with my shower, I put this on everywhere, lay it, layer it everywhere, and then I follow it up with the perfume. Now this is not the bottle that came with that. I have the bottle that came with the set I just purchased. It's still in the plastic. I actually have two of these open. I have a bigger one. And then I have this one that was kind of special from QVC, I think like a year or two ago. Um, I don't know if you noticed that it has kind of like a shimmery, um, uh, overlay or overspray there and just the way the bottle is was just special for the holidays layering this scent you know you hear on the like people are, are talking about it and they're like oh everywhere I go everybody's asking me what I'm wearing and I'm like really I wore this and this was a couple of years ago when I first started wearing the scent and I was going upstairs to my office in the elevator and the person that was coming in with me and I forget if it was a man or a woman um, but just said what are you wearing like like that like I'm like oh, that's philosophy amazing grace like, you smell amazing and I'm just like 
okay i get it i get it and i just kept using it my husband loves the scent anyone that smells the scent it is not overbearing that's why i said it has like that like that clean soap smell but there's a little something else there so it's not just a, a plain old ivory type of smell it adds a little bit of perfume but nothing offensive at all and even layering the scent so you're using the body wash the lotion and the perfume i also have a like a spray oil mist that is luscious i absolutely love it especially for this time of year because my skin is drier not offensive at all even layering all these different elements still gives you a fresh clean very very light scent so moving on to another perfume um i am the type of person that is actually quite allergic to probably 97 percent of the perfumes on the market um i've always been that way so i've never worn perfume um amazing grace was one of the very first um ones that didn't bring about like the, the the perfume itself that didn't bring about an allergic reaction uh, another one that i can wear as well is calvin klein's euphoria and also stella mccartney stella the original og one which is absolutely delicious so when i tried this i had gotten a sample in with an order from sephora and of course i love the packaging because it's just so goth and gorgeous and i got this in i said okay please lord please let this work because i really really want this bottle and that is the kat von d saint perfume i tried the sinner um the sinner is a little too strong for me saint is absolutely perfect it is light um just you know it smells like a perfume but it's very light it doesn't feel offensive to the senses it's just wonderful it's not really it's sweet and florally at the same time but it's not overly sweet like a little girl's perfume but again also to the bottle is just absolutely gorgeous so they have a roller bottle this bottle and then a larger bottle this one i think was 60 or 65 but i have never in my life gone through a sample of perfume so quickly like i did with kat von d saint it was just beautiful my husband was like that's really really nice and for me again because i didn't get an allergic reaction i will know within 30 seconds and sometimes even less if a perfume is not going to agree with me if i spray it or um you know put some on some part of my skin and it's not going to agree with me i start sneezing immediately my nose starts twitching my eyes start watering so it's something that I'm already used to, um, you know, I know what's going to work for me with perfumes. And this, the Saint from Kat Von D is absolutely gorgeous. I'm so glad that it worked out. So we're going to move on to cosmetics. Um, I don't have too much, but I have a couple of um, ones that I'm really, really loving um, and really pleasantly surprised at some of the products as well. So the first one I have here is a foundation. This is the Milk Makeup Blur Liquid, um, liquid foundation. It is a matte foundation. And of course, you know, I like a matte look whenever I put on makeup. I used a sample of this. Usually samples of foundations or makeup, eh, you don't know what, you know, how they're going to react because they put them in the little things with like the little foil things. Are you really getting what's in the, you know, the original bottle or so sometimes you got to take those with like, eh, maybe I have to try the actual size. So I went ahead and used um, used a sample because I heard very good things about this foundation. I checked my skin without meaning to in a way. I looked in the mirror for something and I'm like, my forehead is not oily. Usually hours after I put on makeup, my forehead is going to get oily because I have a very oily T-zone. I have to use mattifying primers. I have to set my foundation with powder. And even throughout the day, a lot of times I will have to use a oil blotting sheet and then powder again. So all of a sudden it hit me. I'm like, yeah, my forehead really is not oily. And I'm like, what did I put on today? And I'm like, oh my God, it was the milk makeup sample. So as soon as kind of that hit me and it was like this aha moment, I went and ordered this from Sephora. I have been loving this foundation. Just beautiful, mattifies down gorgeously, doesn't dry out the skin, blends out really nicely. I will say, um, like the Hourglass one, the very like their um, cr foundation cream to powder or liquid to powder, I work in sections because this does dry down pretty quickly, um, although again, it doesn't dry the skin out. So I'll work in sections, make sure that's blended out, and keep working throughout the rest of the face. My skin stays more matte with this foundation than any other foundation sans the hourglass one because that one is also 
excellent. Any other foundation that I have used, this keeps my skin so matte. Just a beautiful foundation. And again, it doesn't dry out the skin, but it looks gorgeous. It doesn't look textured. I know that there are some that can be very mattifying that just look dry and kind of sink into everything. Not the case with the Milk Makeup. Absolutely love this. This is one that I know that I'm going to continue to repurchase once it's done because it is just that good. Just such a beautiful foundation. Like I can't say enough good things about it because it's absolutely gorgeous. So if you have oily skin overall, oily T-zone, I highly, highly recommend the Milk Makeup Blur uh, foundation. It's just beautiful. So the next item I have is a blush, um, and I've talked about these blushes before. Um, one of my favorite blushes, but I had put it in my everyday makeup drawer last month, and it was something that I kept gravitating towards because it's just a gorgeous blush. This is the Lorac Buildable Blush in uh, Infrared, and let me just open this so you can see what that looks like. It is just the prettiest, mauvey, purpley, plummy, just a gorgeous, gorgeous color. I love the way this looks on my skin tone. Nice. Blends out beautifully, lasts a very long time. Um, I feel that these blushes from Lorac, and I own several of those, um, just last really nicely over several hours. I'm the type of person who puts my hand on my face a lot, uh, rubs my face a lot. So as the day progresses, I do lose a lot of blush going through the day. So I do, I'm not too harsh on blushes that I feel don't last on the skin, but this is one of those blushes that just kind of overcomes all of what I do and just stays beautiful on the skin um, for hours even after I apply it. My next favorite is a highlighting palette. It's one that I pulled in um, this month, so I've been using it for the whole month of November, although I've used it before many, many times. I've owned this probably now for a little over a year. It is the Tarte Skin Twinkle Lighting Palette. They do have a second one. This is the original. Um, I'm trying not to blind you, but trying to get you to see um, how beautiful and reflective this highlighting palette is. It is one of my favorites, hands down. All of the colors that you see here, they don't um, vary a lot. You know, you have the lightest here, then you go here, then this is just a little bit darker. They, all three of them work very well on my skin tone. I don't feel that it looks ashy. Um, you get a lot of good color payoff. I always start out lightly with this highlighting palette because it is very, very saturated in uh, the color payoff, but it blends out beautifully. I feel it lasts a long time on the skin. Um, and it's one that I hadn't used for a while. And I said, you know, I need to pull it back into my everyday makeup drawer because I absolutely love, love, love this highlighter. And so I did, and I absolutely been loving it. i um, really been gravitating towards it as well. The next two items I have are actually for the lips and they are more of a I guess, like skincare, if you will. This is the Milani Keep It Sweet Sugar Lip Scrub and Keep It Smooth Luxe Lip Treatment. In the winter, I exfoliate my lips several times a week because of course, with the weather being cold, my lips are chapped, my lips are drier, and they just need um, to be exfoliated more than in the summer. So this scrub is just so nice. I love the way it goes on the lips. I put it on with my fingers and rub it in. I leave it on for probably like a minute. Then I take a dry paper towel and rub over the lips just to kind of um, slog off any of the dead cells on top and any of that skin that needs to come off. Very, very nice. Smells really nice as well. Kind of vanilla-y, but nothing crazy or overbearing. And then the um, treatment is just a nice, smooth lip treatment. This is not something that's going to last like all day. I know that I've and it smells the same, it's really good. Um, I've heard people say like, oh, it doesn't really do not anything, it just sits on top of the lips. That's what it's supposed to do. Like, I don't know that it's supposed to necessarily just suck into your lips and then you have nothing left on top. I like to use this right after I use the scrub. This is not something that I necessarily put on on a daily basis, um, like a chapstick or anything. I use it after I use the scrub and I feel like it just works very beautiful on the lips and preps the lips, especially if you're using matte liquid lips, uh, lipsticks or that sort of thing. It preps lips beautifully for stuff like that. So moving on to lip color. Um, this I've used, I think once or twice in um, some of my videos here. This is the Inf Infallible Paints Metallic Lips from L'Oreal in Smoldering Eclipse. This is a very, very vampy color. 
um, but just so gorgeous on the lips. I absolutely fell in love with it. And so I had to put it in this video. It is just one of those colors that I think works well for so many skin tones. It's a nice everyday type of color. Um, I know some are very, very vampy and you're like, I'm only going to use those for certain looks, but I absolutely love this. I've used this to work and I absolutely love it. It lasts a long time. It feels nice and hydrating on the lips. It doesn't feel like it um, dries out my lips because it's not a matte um, liquid lipstick. It is metallic, but it's not a matte. So again, this color just absolutely spoke to me. I've worn it several times off camera as well and just absolutely love it. So a lip gloss that I've been loving this month as well, I pulled it in at the beginning of November, is my Gerard Cosmetics Lip Gloss in Plum Crazy. This is one of those lip glosses that looks good on its own. You don't, I mean you can, but you don't have to layer it on top of something else in order to get wonderful color payoff. And I'm just gonna swatch that to show you. That is the Gerard Cosmetics right there. That's a gloss, that's not a liquid lipstick. Um, Sticky, but not too sticky, lasts a long time, really nice color payoff, uh, feels moisturizing on the lips. It's a gloss, so it's not gonna matte down or anything, but again, I love the fact that you can wear it on your own and still get a nice finished look to whatever you're doing to your face. Um, because sometimes if you just put on, you know, a chapstick or something like that, the look doesn't look complete. But even with just a lip gloss and this lip gloss um, in Plum Crazy, it is absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favorites. This is actually my second one because I love this so much. Um, I just use the crap out of this lip gloss. So the last two products I have here are from Laura Mercier. And you may have heard me talk about one of these uh, several times in the last couple of videos. Um, you know, this is the type of thing that I was so pleasantly surprised and so happy that this product actually worked for me because I didn't think it was. So for a 500 point perk, a um, couple of orders ago, actually I think it was when I ordered the Milk Makeup um, Foundation, I ordered this set from Laura Mercier and they were deluxe samples of the Secret Brightening Powder for under the eyes, also the translucent powder, a lipstick, um, you know, small lipstick, which uh, the color didn't work for me. Formula was nice, but the color just didn't work for me, so I gave it to my sister. And um, what else came in there? I cannot remember for the life of me what else. Oh, and also a um, hydrating primer, which I am very, very anxious to use now that the winter months are here because I have used her oil-free um primer and I loved it. So I got the hydrating primer, which is really nice and perfect timing. So the two products that I have here are the powders. So I'm going to start out with the translucent powder because that's the one that I had tried first when I got uh, the set in. So this is about the size you get, but you still get a lot of powder. It's When you look at it, it's not like you only get half of the container. You get a pretty good amount of powder in here. The reason why I hadn't purchased a large size or the regular size of this, A, because it is not a cheap product, but B, I had tried it in the store. Um, I don't recall if it was on my face or on my hand. I felt like I had white cast. So I said, well, I'm not going to buy that, even though people are saying, oh, it's so great. It is translucent. I'm just like, I just wasn't convinced. And then she came out with a translucent powder for uh, dark, deep, rich skin tones, which unfortunately I was kind of in between the light and the dark. I couldn't wear the dark because I literally, unfortunately, would look like I was wearing blackface. So I'm like, that's not going to work, but I don't think this one's going to work either. So I have been using this since I got it almost nonstop, really. It is fabulous. It is translucent just the way the um, product says. It completely just clears up. It doesn't leave white cast. I love the way it sets my foundation. Like this is a product that when I found out, you know, after having used it, that it worked for me and it wasn't going to leave white cast, I was like over the freaking moon about because people love this powder. So the next one was the Secret Brightening which I'm like, okay, this is definitely white. Like compared to this, I don't know if you could see, this has kind of like a tint to it, where, and you probably can't see that. This is really, really white. So I'm like, that's not gonna work for me. So I did use it a few times under my eyes and pleasantly surprised again that it didn't leave white cast. It didn't over brighten. It didn't, um, you know, like accentuate any lines or, you know, go into any lines. It worked 
extremely, extremely well. Now I do have two items that unfortunately did not work for me and I was actually pretty upset that they didn't because I was so excited that this company finally came out with foundations and they were super, super inexpensive. They were less than $7, I think probably like $6.80 or $6.90. Their pricing is very funky. Um, and this is the Ordinary's Colors Serum Foundation and also the Coverage Foundation. So serum being that it's going to be a little more watery, kind of like a BB cream or light CC cream, and your Coverage Foundation being your fuller Coverage Foundation. I can say that the serum foundation is very lightweight. I have to say that the coverage foundation, unfortunately, is not a full coverage foundation because um, it says high coverage. To me, it really didn't work out in that manner. I think more up to like a medium. Unfortunately, the problem with these two, and I use them quite a lot because I needed to use them with different primers, different powders, um, just in different ways to see if I could make these work. I noticed that any day that I used either one, I would be like an oil slick. My face was just, it wasn't even just like shiny, it was greasy. And like when I first used it, I said, all right, maybe it's kind of like a fluke. Let me try a really mattifying primer. Let me make sure I use a really nice tough powder. It doesn't matter. Unfortunately, both of these as the day progressed, any time I used either formula, my skin was so very, very oily. It was just, I mean, it was really, really disgusting. Like I could go like this and it was just really nasty. So I didn't even use like um, oil blotting sheets. I would use like a paper towel and just kind of press it onto my forehead, get off all of that excess oil, then use an oil blotting sheet, then use powder. An hour or two later, same thing. And again, I use these several times each because I didn't just want to say, okay, once or twice, maybe I needed to use a you know, better primer, better powder, whatever. I wanted these to work so badly because they have gotten such great reviews. But I think if you have dry skin, these are going to work out really nicely for you. If you have oily skin, I know they just didn't work for my skin. Um, you may want to steer clear. I know that they are working on uh, a mattifying uh, foundation so as soon as that comes out I am definitely going to try them color range absolutely gorgeous very very light foundations a lot in the middle and then very very deep and dark foundation shades which I really love and again they're like less than seven dollars so if these work for you first of all you can buy the whole range and probably still pay less than you know the most expensive foundation they have out there and then I thought if they worked for me I was going to put them in my kit so again I'm waiting for the mattifying foundation for myself but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass these along to my sister who has normal to dry skin and these may work much better for her so again very disappointed in that but I actually do use a lot of their skincare stuff. Very happy with what I've been using so far. These just unfortunately didn't work for me. So that is going to do it for my current favorites and my two fails, unfortunately. Um, I hope it's a video you enjoyed. If you have any specific questions on any of these items or products, please just leave them down, down um, below in the comment bar and I'll make sure to get back to you. I will link everything down below um, just in case you're interested in any of uh, the products that I talked about. Please subscribe to the channel channel before you leave if you haven't done so already. Also click that little bell so you get alerted as to whenever I upload new videos. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye!